Hey everybody, I'm Jessica Putnam Phillips. Welcome on into the studio. We are going to be doing a carving tutorial. Well, actually, we're going to be doing three carving tutorials and we're going to be giving away Diamond Core tools. They are sponsor for the month of August. So if you don't win, you can always save 10% off if you use the code DCT Jessica 21, all capitals and you can save off of your order from Diamond Core Tools, anything except the sink. So it's everything but the kitchen sink or the studio sink in this case. So I'm gonna show you how to do just general carving, Scraffito and Mishima. Now I have classes on all of these on ClayShare.com. So if you want the very formal, full length, detailed, uninterrupted class, then you check that out on ClayShare. If you just want this fun and formal, conversation atmosphere, then you stay here with me. I say do them both, right? So I've got a bunch of pieces here, some finished, some that are bisque, some we're gonna carve, and I'll we'll talk about different types of carving, what they look like. Why would you wanna do one over another? I mean, honestly, it's personal preference, but we'll, we'll talk about that. So hi, everybody. I see a bunch of folks tuning in. Orlando, Cape May is in the house. If you wanna shout out where you're from right now, go ahead and do that. So thank you, thank you. Thanks for sharing the code. Thanks a bunch. All right, I'm just trying to keep up with the comments. All righty, so let's talk about this. Well, we'll start with general carving. So I've been making pots for a while and a few years after I started pottery, I discovered carving. And that kind of was the thing. Like I just fell in love with it. So I'm gonna have a little disclaimer a little warning at the beginning of this tutorial and nobody here is allowed to blame me. If you watch this and you want to try carving and you do and you fall in love with it and you become obsessed with carving, that's not my fault. It happens. Believe me, it happened to me about 19 years ago. So if you want to carve everything all the time, I'm not to blame. So that's all I'm going to say. All right, <laughs> another Cape May, Wisconsin's in the house, Ohio's here, uh, so we have New Jersey, hello, hello, everybody. All right, so let me just show you some pieces that I have. Here's a basic carved piece. Uh, I, think, I think we'll go to camera two because that'll give you all the best view. So carving is pretty simple. You make a piece and then you decide you wanna carve into it, right? and you just start carving a design into the surface. And it can be anything you want. If you can draw, then you will love carving. If you cannot draw, you can still carve. <laughs> I, see, I see people blaming me already. It's all your fault, Jessica. I'm already getting blamed. I didn't even do anything yet. So this is just a carved into the surface. The glaze makes the texture pop. So this is my Oribe on porcelain. So you can see how that looks. Now let me grab another carved piece. This is actually my spearmint on a tan clay that I carved. And you can see it's a little more subtle, but the idea is there. So you can see, you can see the carving. This is just a weird sculpture. I threw three spouts. You know, sometimes you make teapots and you have extra spouts. What do you do with them? You of course make a little vase with it, right? So that's what I did. It's like a, a minaret a little bit. So there's that one again. So y'all can see that. Hey, Angela, you like it better over there watching on ClayShare. All right, you, you watch wherever you want. I mean, that's the beauty of it. You can watch anywhere. So this is general carving. You just carve into your clay and the glaze highlights your carving. So the next option we have is to do what's called scraffito. And I have a ton of, I've, I've got a ton of scraffito. So scraffito, which is on this piece here, is where you take a clay and you apply a colored slip or underglaze to the surface. And it can be a light clay that you apply a dark slip to, or it can be a dark clay you apply a light slip to, case in point, right? So this was a light clay. I applied iron oxide wash to it kind of like a slip. And then this one is a dark clay that I used a, you can see the clay body right there, white slip on it. So you can create any kind of design you want. You can go from light to dark, dark to light. How thick should clay be if you're gonna carve it? 
It actually doesn't have to be as thick as you think. Just a little, you don't have to throw it super, super thick to carve. And, and we'll talk about that. Make it your regular thickness. That's, that's really what I would suggest. Another scraffito piece is this ombre vase because it's going one color to the next. And actually, we got some plates too. So you just, scraffito means to scratch. So you're scratching through the surface of your underglaze into the clay beneath it. That's what scraffito means. Now, the other technique you can do is an inlay technique, and mishima is what we call it. Traditionally in Japan, they would do it with razor blades and cut in and then do an inlay and then scrape back. I have a modern mishima version that I teach where we use wax, we carve through the wax, and then do the inlay. So this is one I put the underglaze on first as a thin layer, wax the entire pot, carve through, and then use black underglaze to highlight. So that is, um, oh, here's another version of Scraffito. This one is Mishima, right here. This is also Mishima. I think this is the one I teach in the Mishima class, one of these platters like this. And let me show you the jellyfish, the jellyfish, right there. That's all Mishima. So it's all etched into the surface. And then you inlay it and wipe back the excess. So we're gonna do all of these. Um, I also have some pretty intricate Mishima that I do. Little crazy, it's all done by hand. So here's a plate that I did a couple years ago. Even the signature. So you just carve your fine lines, inlay, and then wipe back the excess. It's a fun, fun technique. It's right there, so everybody can see that. You love carving too from Greece. I know, carving is like my thing. I showed a little bit of this one. Again, this is an inlay. This is Mishima. I showed this in a quick little video. And so you do this carving when it's leather hard. You bisque fire it, and you end up with something that looks like this. So once it's bisqued, you get that right there. And then you color it if you want to, right? Or you don't color it. It's up to you. And this is the urn. Um, I made for my little little Evie, and now I have to make a second one for Bella because my two Yorkie girls passed away. So I should have not made Evie an urn. I should have waited and made one and put them together in the urn, but I already made Evie's. So that is an in-process piece. We're not going to work on that right now. We're going to put this guy up there. All right. So let me grab my glasses. You're watching me on the big TV, woohoo! So here's some more carving. This is dark clay, light slip. This is Laguna uh, 80. I have to think, I have a lot of clays. So Laguna 80, white speedball underglaze, that's all. And then I carved through it my chun blue on the rim and on the inside, right there. And so you see how your lines are dark on this version because it's the clay showing through. And again, this would technically be scraffito not Mishima. So you get the difference, right? You've got carving, where you carve your line. Scraffito is you scratch away, and Mishima is you create a line that you inlay into. Yes, a table full of goodies. Uh, here's some I have to finish, some cherry blossom vases that I've still got to just add the color and add the glaze to, so those will get done. I have no idea when. <laughs> <laughs> so, so there's a lot of pots. Um, here's, a, here's just a recently carved one. And this is what we'll be doing tonight, something like this. Here's another one that I did carve the design. This is actually a raku. This one here is a raku piece. Look, it's been sitting on the shelf so long it's collecting dust. I made this in, um, I'm almost embarrassed to say, uh, <clears throat> can you all see the date? <laughs> I, I carved this back in 2013, and I have not fired it yet. I'm embarrassed by that. So it's been sitting there for eight years waiting to get fired. It's a Raku clay, so I've just been waiting for the perfect Raku firing, I guess. So we'll get that done one of these days. I mean, it's only been since 2013. It's not like it's been a long time or anything. <laughs> All righty. So I'm going to move stuff off to the side. We're going to start with just general carving, and we'll talk about pieces. You know, if you've never done it before, 
I don't want you to be afraid to try carving. What I want you to do is I want you just to get a little piece. Like we did a class um, with this little guy, a live tutorial, I think during Clay Share Con. Um, and all we did was put little blobs of color on our plates and then we carved into them. And I showed you how to do this. And look at what you get. I mean, it's, it's really beautiful. It's very simple. So this is a great way to start. You're not investing in a lot of material. These little plates are very easy to make. So some, something to start with are these little guys right here. Especially the square plates, the square edge plates, they're really easy to work with, or the hex plates. So we're gonna be working with a hex plate tonight in one of our tutorials. Um, and then I got some other shapes to work with. All right, so speaking of hex plates, I happen to have a hex plate. <laughs> <laughs> so these I made yesterday and they've been sitting covered until they are very dry leather hard. You want to be able to hold your plate so that's not sagging. You don't want it mushy at all, but it cannot be too dry because if it's too dry, you're, dry, you're not going to get nice crisp lines. They're going to kind of break on you a little bit. So we got our, our carving clay ready. So you keep trying to do the carving on little plates. It just always looks yucky. So Jane, what's going on with that? Because I think, um, I think it's gonna, I think it's it's gonna take some practice. But also, I want to help you out. So am I gonna bring it to the workshop in September, Stephanie? Am I gonna bring what? Carving? We're gonna be carving in the workshop in September. Ah, uh, yes, yes, I am. Thank you. Um, although Drew doesn't know it, but I'm gonna finally raccoon it but I'm gonna put black under glaze in it first and, and white back to really make it pop. You'll get to see the finished one. I'd planned to build my own Raku kiln a few years ago, but that didn't work out. All right, so what am I doing now? Before you carve the surface, you need to prep your surface. Once you start carving, you're not gonna be able to go back and smooth out any bumps or scratches or divots or any unevenness that you have. You need to have a pristine surface to work on. It just, it will look shoddy if you don't clean your surface now. So damp sponge, wipe your surface really well. Here's just a little plate that we might get to tonight. I don't know. We got a lot of carving to do and got to give away some stuff. So finish the pot at Drew's Raku workshop. I think so. Don't feel bad though, I'm not alone. You have pieces in your suit have been sitting for a while. It's pretty sad when they sit for eight eight years eight years um i actually have pieces i made in oh uh, goodness oh four that i haven't glazed so i mean what's that what's 2004 how long ago was that that was just the other day that's not a long time ago i have got a series of vases that um actually i made a sculpture in 2003 i haven't glazed because i'm not sure what to do with it i'm still trying to pick the glaze I mean, at this point, I could have made a hundred more sculptures, so it really doesn't matter, right? All right, so we're cleaning our surface. And you can do this, as you've seen, on wheel-thrown pots. You know, this was a wheel-thrown piece. You can do this on hand-built anything. I mean, you, you carve whatever you want. Tiles, for example. Tile, right? Here's a great big tile I carved. Did some fantastic scraffito on that. Your lines never look straight. You do a pattern, it never looks like what you want, like a flower. So Jane, did you, did you do this one yet? Have you tried this tutorial, the blobby one? Um, the blobby roses. If you haven't, maybe we can do those in prime time. We could do some blobby roses together. All right, so once your surface is ready, you can go ahead and carve it. If you can't get to it the day it's ready to carve, this is what you need to do. You need to take some plastic and you need to wrap it up really well and sit it on a shelf and let it set there or put it in a damp box or both because you need it to stay this level of moisture until you're ready to carve it. That's longer than you've been doing clay. You started in 2016. Well, yeah, but I mean, 
You guys, I mean, you guys do other things, right? So, I mean, this, is, this has been my job for a while. We're all at different places. Alrighty, so general carving. We can use so many tool options here. Um, I gotta adjust this camera, sorry folks, so that you can see it. Thank you. My, my camera tech was not working today. All right, so I have got some diamond core tools. <laughs> so I've got some diamond core tools. Now when I first started carving, diamond core tools wasn't around. I didn't have diamond core tools. What did I carve with? Um, this. Ba -ba! Needle tool. Uh, yeah, we wonder why I have carpal tunnel and had to have surgery earlier this year. Years of carving with just a needle tool will do that to you. But happily for me, I don't know, seven years, six, seven years ago, I discovered diamond core tools and they changed my life. I wish that I had known about them since the beginning because I think my hands would have been much happier, but I didn't. So luckily we have them now. These right here are my two faves. This is the P12 and this is the L3. So tonight we're giving away to two lucky winners their choice of two carving tools. You get any two you want. You get to pick, the winners do. Um, if you don't have these, these would be on my list. And we'll use some others. So for Scrafito, you can use either one. For Mishima, I do prefer this because Mishima is an inlay technique. So you need to have something that can do a nice line that you can inlay into. How long are the sessions here? They are about 45 minutes to an hour, depending on what we get done, right? Oh, thanks, Amy. That tile that I showed is my chun glaze, actually. Yeah, my chun blue. This is my chun on this one, my chun on this. You can tell the chun is opalized on the rim of this piece here. So it changes. All right, so when we're carving with these two different tools, the P12, these, these carving tools here, will give you a nice crisp straight edge, nice for line work, but they don't curve as well. If you wanna do a lot of curvies, you're gonna want something like the L3, which is the small football, large football. <laughs> Lisa was gonna say it was hard on my wrist. It was, but not any longer because the pain's gone since I had the surgery, so. Is the video called Blobby Roses? No, <laughs> it's not, it should have been. Um, it, it was a live we did together, it was Scrafito, and um, we'll see if we can find it and share that. If I haven't done the Blobby Roses as a tutorial, I'll, I'll do the Blobby Roses. If you guys want an official Blobby Rose class, we, we can do the Blobby Roses. We can call them Blobby Roses if you want too. We even did a pineapple in the video, the Blobby Pineapple. We didn't call it that either. All right, so let's, let's decide what we're gonna do. You have to look at your shape and you have to think about how your shape is formed when you're gonna do this carving. And you can't just go willy nilly into it. I mean, you can, but then you end up with something that you're really unhappy with. So here we have a flat form, we have a plate, and we have this really great border that lends itself for some nice border treatment. And then we have this flat surface in the center that would lend itself to some nice freehand carving, right? Looking at something like this bottle, you're in camera three, right? The overhead? Yep. So looking at something like this bottle, you know, we have this form that comes down the side. And so I approach this as looking at it from the top. Look at how beautiful that is from the top down. So I started at the top with my design and I carved it down the sides. So you can see the bottom is not very exciting. This is before I signed the bottoms. Yep, that too. I've got to find some newer pieces. This is an older one. But I was thinking about how the form flowed and the shape of the form when I did this design. I probably did this one about, oh, look what just happened to my plate. No, don't look. This is what has been in the bottle for the last, I made that about 10 years ago. <laughs> what gets in a bottle over 10 years? Everything. So something like this, when you look at the shape, I was thinking about how it curves out when I made, this is what I call my ribbon carving. I did a whole series of these ribbon vases. I even did some for the, um, 
Susan J. Komen Breast Cancer Walk and donated pieces for the prize for that a few years ago. And it was all, um, it was pink and everything. It was a fabulous piece. So thinking about the shape. Now, let me grab just a simply carved one. You know, here, all I did was start the rim with the leaves and I just said leaves all the way around. And then I echoed those leaves down. It's such an easy way to start when you're beginning because you make a few leaves and then you just come down. And then I even did some coming up from the bottom until they met. And so you can see on that. So you wanna put my chun over a purple underglaze. You know some glazes will eat away at the purple. Well, chun has zinc. It could do some weird stuff, but I'll tell you, my chun looks amazing on top of purple. All right, so that being said, and we talked about the shape, this is flat. So we are kind of open to lots of options. You know, here's one I did with underglaze, so that's technically scraffito. Here's another one. So you think about your shape when you're starting to carve these. If you are just starting and you've never carved anything before, maybe you just want to carve your rim like I did on this piece. And then you leave the center open. It's simple. It's a good way to just like dip your toe in the pool of carving. And then the next one you'll do, you'll jump right in and you'll do this, right? Carving two. <laughs> so, all right, let's get going. We, we don't have all day. We've got to get this carved. What does blobby mean? Um, blobs, like big blobby chunks, like when we apply the underglaze, we just kind of blobbed it on, sort of. Blobby, you know, those technical terms. All right, so we have this great form. Because it's coming out almost as a triangle already, I'm just gonna keep going with that shape. And I really like to, to always do wheel thrown and hand built, but I'm not throwing yet again until um, I need a little more time for my hand. So I'm gonna pull straight back, right? on these corners. And then we gotta think about our spacing here. So I find people rush into carving. You have to think about it. So let's look at what we're gonna do. If we wanna do triangles, let's think about our spacing. We could come in and then go to there, right? So this would be the tip, the very center of the inside. I'm teaching you all how to do a triangle rim right now. So you do your corners and then you go to the center of the inside and make a little just mark so you know, and that is gonna be where you come out to. So you're just gonna pull out as a triangle. Just like that. Now it's connect the lines, right? We're gonna connect this to here. We made kind of a big triangle, but it will work out in the end. Just like that. These little crumbs, well, I keep a brush, let me just grab it. Any brush will do, that'll work. This fan brush will work. And a bucket of water nearby because you wanna clean as you go. So you just take your crumbs and you brush them into the bucket. So you did one side and then we go and do the next side. Now, if you need something to rest your hand on because you know this is asking a lot, go ahead and get yourself some Foam. Yeah, here yeah, I got some foam. And you can fold it up to the side so you have something nice. I would suggest make yourself comfortable. I am standing and doing this and hunching over. That's a terrible idea. Don't do that to yourself. Best option is to get yourself a proper height stool. Personally, I like to sit and hold my pieces in my lap when I'm carving. All right, so I've got a hand rest. I'm comfortable in a good position. And then you just go, right? So we did that side, let's start here. So I'm just gonna pull out. And again, this was our point. We gotta go to here, we gotta go a little further out. So plan to make at least one practice piece. How's our, how's our overhead doing? Because you're gonna mess them up. You're gonna mess them up. So you have to practice to get it right. It's just how it is. All right, we're not gonna be able to do everything if I carve the whole rim. So we just started there. And I'm gonna show you the pattern I'm gonna do. So you've had my chun blue for two years and never gotten good results. It clamps on the piece when you dip it, usually just wash off. 
Something else, can you add gum? Is it too thick, Diana? If you're dipping, are you dipping or brushing? Because that makes a difference. If you're brushing it, it you need to have some, I would put um, some gum solution into it. So we carved one side. This is only the, oh my goodness, let's see, one, two, three, fourth thing I've carved since surgery. So I am a bit out of practice. But hey, you don't get better if you don't keep at it. And you're going to make pieces that you want to throw away. Well, you know, if you want to just make tiles and then do a little bit of carving on them, and if you're not happy with it, just put it in the reclaim. It's just clay. And you see how my lines at first look kind of messy, but now they're looking kind of awesome. And I must apologize, my little doggy wants me to pick him up. If I sit down, my dog thinks it's time for cuddles. And he um, is crying, but I can't pick him up and carve. You might have to. Often when I'm working on a piece, because I don't want to keep picking it up and moving it so much, I will let it, I'll just brush my crumbs towards the center. And then we'll just come here and go this way. See, I'm alternating back and forth. This is a great way to do triangles. It's a good starting pattern to carve. You really can't mess it up too much. So there we have There's your Jack Jack. I know. Kevin took him inside. He doesn't do well if Mama won't hold him. So that looks pretty good. I mean, if you just imagine that rim, you could do just rims. Great way to practice getting better at carving. Oh, I know. You guys heard Jack crying. It's terrible. So you're having troubles with your play plates warping in the glaze firing. What are you doing wrong? Barb, a lot of warping actually happens during the drying. Um, you know, are you weighing them down with a weight bag when you're drying them? Are you firing them on flat kiln shelves, making sure your shelves aren't warped themselves? Because that can make a difference. So we could just keep going with this all the way around, but if we do that, we won't get to the other two techniques we got to do tonight. So we know where we're going, right? And so for the center, I mean, if you wanted to just do a crosshatch pattern or something, you could just be brave and start at one corner and just start pulling straight across. If you're beginning, I wouldn't suggest that. I would suggest you wait and um, you know, practice a little more. I think I'm gonna do a leaf pattern. And so I'm just gonna start here and I'm gonna continue with this P12. The, any of the um, carvers like the, the little palm carver is also a go-to of mine. The V-tip. Carver, the V1, I think. All right, so we're going to do a leaf. Leaves are a nice kind of combination of curvy and geometric shapes because they have a gentle sloping curve that works nice with this tip. Not such an aggressive curve that I often like. So I, I get aggressive with my curves when I'm carving. So a lot of my carving technique is the same. It's just different surface treatments before I start the carving. So it's whether I put on a slip or I go ahead and apply wax. Or sometimes like I'm doing here, I'm just gonna carve directly into the surface. So these are just some hanging leaves that I'm just putting on the surface. And you see how elegant that flows? I mean, you could just do one corner if you didn't want to do your whole plate carved. We will be doing carving in my workshop. So those of you who need carving 101 and are really struggling, we'll focus on, we're gonna spend a chunk of time doing Scrofito and Mishima 
and all that. So I would continue all the way around with the leaves and I like to overlap them. And then you're left with the center. And honestly, I would just leave it blank because it's nice to have a quiet area for your eye to rest. So the point, well, the one I'm using right now is the point up or down. This is the P12, it doesn't matter. You can't mess it up. When I carve with the palm carver, I carve with the point up, like a little bird beak. Um, you're on the overhead. Little bird beak, I carve like this into the clay right here. But you can carve either way, is my understanding. So it's just whatever works best for you. All right, so this one, I'll finish this off camera and share with everybody, or maybe we'll work on it in prime time tonight. But I want to share other things, so I've got to, I got to move along, because I still got scraffito to do and some mishima. All right, let me grab a couple things. So I don't know if you need to see me apply wax or see me apply under glaze. I've done it many times. I, I made these quickly. I was going to show you all, but I think, I think we're just going to go with this. So your lines are very long and you're moving your hand too slow each time, so you're making weird crooked lines. Do shorter lines, go, don't be afraid, go with the line. All right, so I have a wax plate right here. This is what we do for Mishima. We wax it, because that's the modern Mishima. You don't have to wax. You can just carve and then do black and then wipe away, but it's easier if you do wax. And then here's one I applied slip to and we're just going to carve into it. So I think we're going to do the Mishima, f no, we'll do Scrifido first. I think about it for a minute. So could you have, could have a stencil or a plain line transfer? Absolutely, Diane. So in my class, I have in my carving class and in my Mishima, I show you how you can take a drawing of your own or one you found online and turn it into a guide and use that to follow the line. So any image you have, whether it's your own or one you found or one you took outside of flowers, I show you how to, how to transfer that um, onto your surface. There's a way to do it. Yeah, you totally can. You don't have to do it freehand. There is a way you can create a guide for yourself. All right, let's move on. We're gonna go to this graffito piece. And although I can use the um, P12, this shape, already has a lot of curvy stuff happening in it. So I want to kind of reference that and go with the curvy. Yeah, for those who cannot draw, I show you in that class. Kev, I don't know if you can grab the, I think it's the Mishima class, not the carving on clay, maybe both. I can't remember. So let's go ahead and carve. Now, I applied Speedball Aqua, Turquoise, and Sea Blue to this. That gives me something similar to this in color. What a change, right? Look at this. Before, after. Before, after. It's, it's kind of crazy that it changes so much, but it does. That's why you should do test tiles and test plates. But um, we're going to do something kind of like this right here. Very organic kind of um, amorphous shapes. So I'm just going to start and just make little bumps. Can you draw a bump? Can you draw an M? Yes, you can draw an M. You can draw an M, so you can do this. Now you could just do one color. You don't have to do multiple colors like I did here. It would just have a different look. So I'm going to brush this out of the way. <laughs> I'm going to break my brush. Apparently I need a new brush shoddy brush. <laughs> it's live! Brushes break! All right, moving on up. I usually have a inexpensive brush from the hard, hardware store that I use for this. Yeah, it's somewhere. We don't know where that is. So I made one little, little M. Now I'm going to go inside and make a U inside that M. And if you don't think you can draw, you can. I have a bunch of classes that teach you how to draw. Drawing for potters. It's not fancy art school drawing. It's based on like letters and stuff like when I teach kids. And I'm telling you, it's the best way to learn because getting complicated never makes things easy. So now I've got a little color area I've got to do something about, a little bridge. So I'm going to go in and do that. 
and connect these little loops. I'm just playing with shape. I, I'm not worrying at all about what's going to happen at the end. I'm just going to do this, and I would do this all the way around, each, each level. You just got 75 sheets of all kinds of stencils at a thrift store yesterday for two bucks. <gasps> Woohoo! You can do a lot. So the tool I'm using now is the Diamond Core Tools L3. It's called the small football, large football, because one end is a small football and one's a large one. And it's my favorite one because I feel bad for the Instagram folks. I want to help them out a little more. Sorry, everybody else for a second. I want to get them in a little bit better so I can see a little bit. Um, and you can make small lines or fatter lines. And I love this because it's so organic and it can curve any way you want. You get a lot of options with this. So now we have to, from here to here. We have a big gap, right? So uh, why not do leaves? She says. Because she does leaves on everything. So we're going to do leaves? Yes, we're going to do leaves. So I just did a row of leaves, right? This one's going to have to go this way. So I did some leaves. But I don't want to just leave them empty, so let's go in and carve a mini leaf inside the big leaf, right? So if you're carving, you see how easy it is for me to carve. I'm not getting burrs and it's not mushing. My lines are crisp, they're clear, and um, that's all because the clay is at the perfect dryness. It's a dry leather hard. If you wait until it's too dry, you'll get what's called tearing. If it's too wet, it'll mush. So you won't get these beautiful crisp lines. You'll get mushy lines. So now what are we going to do? Well, I think we're going to just do a little leaf because we're coming into this next area of color. So I'm trying to change up my design a little bit every time I transition. But I'm not really concerned with that change. I'm not, you know, saying, oh, it has to stop at the line. I definitely don't want to make it a line. But I want to think about my design. So I just did this right here. And then now we have something going on in here. And what I like to do when I don't know what to do is I start in the center and I just do five little blobs to make a flower like that and then I make basically a heart off of each one each petal I don't know if you can see that I'm basically making are you in the overhead yeah. I'm, I'm doing the best I can I gotta put my hand somewhere <laughs> when your cameraman gives you a hard time for having a hand and so you just keep coming out with the little heart petals, right? Which is basically an uppercase E, right? An E or a backwards three, your choice. And you just keep going with these. And I like to get a little bigger as I come out from the center. And this design alone would be enough. Like you could just start at the center of your plate if you didn't know what to do and you're like, uh, Jess, I don't know what to do. Start at the center, work your way out. So you can draw, you can carve, you can make awesome patterns. So I only did one third of this. Uh, now we have to do something about the inside of these leaves. So I'm just going to go ahead and just draw some lines down the leaves. See, we're just removing the material. So scratching it away because it's graffito, which means to scratch, right? And you can make your lines as far apart or as close together as you want. Hold up to camera. Hold up to camera. I can try to zoom in a little bit more, see if that'll get it. A little better, 
little closer. It's the, be the best I can do. And talking about how my hand is supporting itself, I don't know if you could see my pinky. My hand is actually, let me turn it sideways. See how my, this is the side view. This is how my hand is resting on the plate. The plate is dry enough that I can gently rest it on it. I'm not pressing down. If you have a habit of pressing too hard, I do suggest you get that foam out and you use that. Um, you know, that one piece of foam I had is kind of big. We got this kind of foam, this little egg crate here. So you could use something like that as well. So it's just some black packing foam that came in a box. I got something. I can't remember what. Something came in the mail. So let me see if I can get this way so you guys can see better. And so you just go down and you remove. You're just scratching away. And this is a great way to not worry about technique because you're just scratching it. You don't have to make perfect lines. We're just getting really scratchy. If you don't like the rattling, you can hold your dish down. That's just because as I'm pressing down, I'm lifting the front up a little bit. All right, so that's all I can do right now until I carve my guides for the rest. But what do you think? Ah, it's all right, right? That's going to work. And the colors I'm using are all speedball under glaze colors, and they are Sea blue, uh, turquoise, and aqua. That's the three colors. All right, so this one I'll finish again off camera because we got to get to the Mishima. Because I got to give stuff away in 10 minutes. So, got to get that done. Um, scraffito. Let's just talk a minute about scraffito. Okay, so this was scraffito where we're scratching. It's going to create some dust. Um, I usually do scraffito out of my studio because you are scratching into clay. You are stirring up clay dust. If you have to do it in your studio, you might want to wear a respirator and run an air cleaner. And once you finish carving, leave your studio for about eight hours while your air cleaner works and cleans that up. I just go outside and I sit on my patio and I just enjoy nature and I carve. And I even do it in the winter because I don't like to carve inside. So that's technique for safe carving, right? So I'll finish this, maybe in prime time we'll finish that. Now let's move on to the wax time. I could carve a pattern like my watch band. Oh yeah, because I'm gonna match my watch to my, my plates now. <laughs> hey Linda, I'm glad you're loving the pottery. I'm giving away all my secrets, you know it. I don't have secrets. I, no, you know, I share it all. All right, so we're going to do what's called Mishima. And I talked about this already a bit, but I'll show you something else. So Mishima is where you do an inlay. You carve a line, you inlay it with a color, and then you wipe away the excess. Here I used black speedball underglaze in Laguna B mix. So I got this light clay with a dark line. Here's a bis piece that has the line work, but not the color. You see how we don't have the color yet. Right? We have to get to the color. That comes after it's bist. But you have to lay down the groundwork to have a place to put your color. So we have to carve our design. So I have found that this company is not a sponsor, but it's my favorite one, so I recommend it. It's Mr. Mark's Wax On Wax Resist. It's a water-based resist. It's sold by the ceramicshop.com. Just go to their website. It's my favorite one. If you try this with other waxes, they might not work so well. I'm just saying, some of them are gummy and sticky. This one dries nice and hard, but not brittle. And that's really important. So you put one thin layer of the wax. Now, Mr. Marks, I used to have to thin it down. Since they changed the formula and it's now pink, you don't have to. If you have the purple stuff, you have to thin it down. But the pink stuff, you do not have to. So that's a little, little tip. All right, so this is a complete Mishima inlay. This, this is all, you just go wild with this. There's no anything stopping you from making whatever you want on the surface. Anything you can imagine, you can do it. So you always have smudges left after you wipe back. Could it be the back? Could it be the wax? It could be, Lindsay, what wax are you using? 
because the um, some waxes are stickier and your underglaze will stick to it when you're trying to wipe it back. So. so did I say you could put food coloring in your wax so you could see where you put it? I did say that. If you have wax, that will work. Um, some companies' waxes don't work. They're too thick. They're too glumpy. So, all right. So, Mishima. I just do whatever. I mean, I've got a bunch of examples. You know, here's a, based on a, a Cruel, C-R-E-W-E-L, embroidery pattern. That's this one here. Um, these are just some lines, just lines and some flowery things. So we're just going to do some flowery things. And I teach you how to draw, I call them pin flowers, right? So we're going to draw pin flowers on the surface here. So they're, they're really simple. So we're just going to go up. And then I'm just going to do like figure eights on the way down until I get to the bottom. And then you brush off. Now, what I love about Mishima over Scraffito is you have wax on the surface, which we're carving through. That wax is catching the clay, so it's not the same as Scraffito as far as clay dust issue. It's much safer. So I just brushed this off again into my bucket of water. So I did one like that. I got to do another one like that, right? Because we've got we've to have some continuity here, right? So let's do some figure eights. Think of it as making like bow ties, right? Little figure eights all the way down. And so I'm going to do those in all the corners because I want to. That's the beautiful thing about making pottery and carving. You do what you want. So we've got these fun little fern shapes, and I'm going to put some little, they'd be veins and leaves, right? So everywhere I carve will be black. The underglaze that you want to stay always wiped off too. Maybe your carving isn't deep enough, Maya. It could be, it could be. The other thing it could be is your underglaze hasn't set long enough or it's set too long. It only has to sit for about um, five minutes. Your clay has to be dry, dry enough though. So if your clay isn't dry enough, it's not thirsty. It's not gonna absorb everything. And this is one thin coat of wax, just one. And the purple, remember I'm using the pink. You don't have to thin the pink. If you use the purple, you have to thin it. It's just how it is. They make it thin it. No, it just doesn't, um, doesn't work as well. All right, so here's some like daisies. We just did a curving line up, just like that. And then we just did craziness at the top, right? So let's do another one. Curvy line up, and then just like crazy petals coming out from the center. We'll, we'll, put, we'll put stuff on there in a minute. We'll put leaves on the side. Um, We'll go, we'll go here too. So this is like a scribble on clay a little bit. And I need to adjust the camera. So let me clean that off. So it almost looks like a firework, the way that comes up like that. And then we'll put a leaf that's a little pointy like that on it. So you know the way to get better at drawing or carving is just do it every day. Um, I like a drawing practice of five minutes a day. Look, it's not a big commitment. You're sitting there in the morning having your breakfast or your cup of tea or something. Like you just, you got five minutes where you're having your coffee and your breakfast. Grab your notepad, set a timer for five minutes and just doodle for five minutes. You see what comes out of that. You will be surprised at the amazing things that you can create just from five minutes of doodling. And I know it seems crazy to think that that's going to be enough, but it, it is enough. All right, so now we're going to make a sort of like an iris right here. And we're going to do probably three of them. So they are four petaled. We do one on the side, 
and then we do one, two in the center that are a little taller, and then one on the other side, just like that. And then you pull them down. And they don't touch the base, but they come close to each other. And I know this is probably hard to see. Scraffito would really pop with this. When I add the black, it's going to pop. So you're going you're gonna to really see it. All right, and for this, we're just going to do, again, a figure eight, but just a tiny little one, just like a little bow tie, this one. They're fancy. They're going out. And then we need a little something down in here. It's a little, little empty, right? So does the inlay layer have to be black? Oh, absolutely not. Your inlay layer can be any color you choose. Yeah, no. There's no limits on what color you can do. Absolutely not. So I'm just going to do a few, just a few little leaves there, just like that. See, little tufts of grass. So it's kind of formal a little bit in the layout, but you see how fun that is now. How are we on time? Oh, we're getting there. I've got, I've got, like, I've got no time. All right. You can do blue. I love doing blue on white. And if you did blue, you don't have to color it. You just leave it. Let me show you a blue piece. Um, so this is one I did all Mishima. So can you see each one of those carved lines? And then it's just blue. And I actually did some blue wash with the same underglaze. But yeah, look at that. All just carved. Every line you see is a carved line. Let me get in close. This only took me like four hours to carve. So, you know, some of my pieces are 12 hours of carving. It depends um, on the size of the piece. You know, a, a good, well-carved plate is about an hour of my time. So, but I love doing it. All right, so we've got our, our carving done, but we need to make our lines pop. So let's use blue. What the, why not? You guys want blue? Um, if you want a good blue, royal blue from, I'm looking for it, from Speedball. Where is my royal blue? Sea blue is nice too, but there it is. If you want a cobalt blue, royal blue from Speedball is my go-to. And so I just use one tip of the diamond core tool. That was the L3, but you could use others. All right, so here's where you run into trouble. Usually full strength, this is really really thick and, and gloppy. We want to thin it down so it runs a bit. See how thin, see how it's thin? And do you see how it's beading on the surface? The wax is repelling it and kind of forcing it to go into the carved areas, just the carved areas. So I love this technique because you're not wasting material. You know, normally you would cover the entire area and then you'd have to scrape it or wipe it back. And that I have done, and it's not, it's just not fun. All right, so you're gonna let that sit just, I usually let it sit for about five minutes because you need to have that clay absorbing the color. It's, what's happening is the clay is wicking that color right now down into itself. So you have to break the wax layer, you have to apply your color, and then you have to wait for it to seep in. Right? So think about the earth after it's rained and it's really been dry. It takes a little while for that rainwater to be absorbed and to seep down into the earth, right? So we have to wait for the seeping to happen. And it can take five minutes. So it looks like the ceramic shop only has purple version of the wax. Um, Rachel Hunt, I think they just haven't updated their image, but because it used to be purple, I'll, I'll check with them. I'll, I gotta reach out to them again. I've reached out to them before. They're, you know, love this wax though. It's good. Um, if you're thinning it, I thin it about 75% wax, 25% water. So that's my go-to when I thin. All right, look at how it's going in. We're losing our sheen. It's slowly, slowly absorbing it. Now, I have wax crumbs on my plate, on my board. These wax crumbs cannot be reclaimed. Do not put these in your reclaim. This wax clay has to just go. So this is not for using again. 
um, if you brush it into your bucket, which is the safest way to do it, you cannot now reclaim this bucket. You have to get rid of it because this wax will embed itself in your clay. It'll cause voided issues. It's, it's going to be a problem. So can you use royal blue on the bottom like the black speedball? You sure can. Do you want to do it now? I mean, we can do it now. Yeah, um, speed balls under glazes don't stick. What you will get is a little shadow area on your kiln shelf that will leave behind a stain almost, but it doesn't come off. All right, so look, I will sign this once it's dry, probably in prime time. We can't sign it now. It's got to dry. All right, flip this back over. Let's wipe it. So you've never used this technique, Tara. Try it, try it, try it. So you just ordered it, came in purple, interesting. So um, taking a sponge, I'm squeezing it out really, really well. Really well, like squeeze, squeeze. Really, really, look, my sponge is gone. I'm squeezing it that hard. You want to get it not bone dry, but you gotta squeeze it out. If you have a wet sponge and you go to wipe, what happens is the water from your sponge transfers into your lines, saturating your lines and preventing the clay from absorbing your color. You got that. That could be some problem too. All right, ready? This is magic time. This is my favorite time. Wipe away all the stresses of your day. If only it was that easy. <laughs> well, what about the flower on the top without the underglaze? I'll get it later. Yeah, you can go back and do it again later. I want to put more carving on this. So I'm leaving that one alone and I'm going to carve that side. And that is the beautiful thing about this because, oh gosh, we have to do the giveaway. Um, I could put blue and, and do blue lines on some and then I could do green on others. So you're not locked into one color at all. You can do multicolors. You giving me some names? All right, who wants to win stuff? Everybody, right? Every, you all wanna win? Let's, let's win some stuff. Let's give some stuff away. All right, I'm gonna need my glasses if I'm gonna have any hope of reading names. <laughs> As I take the glasses off like I can read. So there we have it. I don't know, your camera, one? one no. All right, there we have it. Yes, I've still gotta finish this half, I know, but you get it. Right? And we'll do that. I'll get it done. I, pr I promise. I will finish this. Um, let's set it to the side. We'll work on this in prime time and I'll answer more questions for my premium members. We'll talk about carving and, and we'll make some great plates. We'll get that done. All right. Two people are going to win. And what you get is your choice of diamond core carving tools, two carving tools. So the two people's names who I'm going to read off right now will get an email letting them know they won and they pick the two carving tools, any carving tools they want. Now you do not have to purchase anything to enter our giveaways. All you do is sign up for our emails on clayshare.com. So if you missed this one, well, we're giving away stuff all month long from Diamond Core Tools. So sign up for the emails and you're entered. If you are a premium member of clayshare.com, you're already in. You don't have to sign up. You don't have to do anything. All right. So let me answer this question. So technically I could underglaze a piece, let it dry, wax resist, then do another color over the wax resist. Uh, yeah, that's what I did here. Oh, but you could, I did, I did underglaze first, then wax the whole thing and carve through and did black. But yes, you could do one color carving, let it dry, wipe it away, do another. You, it's infinite, infinite what you can do with it. It's crazy. All right. I don't have enough time. Usually I do a whole hour of scrofito, a whole hour of Mishima, a whole hour of carving. I did it all in one. It's unheard of. First winner of the Diamond Core Tool Prize for this week is... Drum roll. Wait, I have a drum roll. Hold on. Kevin, look what I brought with me. I brought the sound machine. Should I give it to Kev? I'm not close enough to the mic now. The first winner is Libby Smith. Libby Smith, congratulations, my dear. You get to pick two Diamond Core Tools carving tools. And have I thanked Diamond Core Tools for their generosity and awesomeness for being this month's sponsor and giving away all kinds of goodies? Because we're giving away a lot of goodies. <gasps> Libby's there! Please! Libby, it's you! It's Libby! You! You won! Libby is here! Get your tools, lady! Pick your tools! Get them! So excited.
exciting. I love it. All right. Whew. I am going to need the fan. <laughs> Congratulations, Libby. I am so happy. Um, so do I have to use a celadon? You do not have to use a celadon. You will want to use a translucent, transparent glaze because if you use an opaque glaze, it could hide your carving. So you could use a clear, a celadon, um, something like my Oribe, but you don't want to lose your, your carving. So congratulations. Judy says, I'm here too, pick me. I wish I could pick everybody. All right, second winner of the Diamond Core Tools prize for this week is... There's a reason that's been missing. Christine Lucas. Christine Lucas, congratulations. You have won yourself two Diamond Core Tools. Two of them. So who makes the brown underglaze I recommend? Yeah, that would not be Speedball. That would be Mako. Mako's brown underglaze is my favorite brown. Although Speedball says if you add um, Darvan 7 to their brown, it will mix. I haven't tried it yet, myself personally, but they said. So should you thin your Speedball underglaze for? Yes, you have to thin it to make it watery enough, like a little thicker than ink. So it depends on the consistency of your bottle. The one I'm using right now, um, it's like a thick ink, um, not as thin as milk, maybe half and half. And I love how everything relates to food. So, so congratulations, Libby Smith and Christine Lucas. Ladies, you will get a email from us and we'll connect you with Diamond Core Tools. They'll get you your prizes. You get to tell them what you want. So that's your decision. Like you have to figure out what you want tonight. Tough, right? Alrighty, so that was tonight's broadcast. In prime time, we're gonna do more carving. So my premium members, we're gonna do that. We have a brand new class coming out tomorrow. It's a hand building class. It's a big one. Kev, how long did you say that class was? Oh, uh, it's at least an hour and a half. Hour and a half. So my new class is an hour and a half. We are gonna be hand building something spectacular. I may give my premium members a sneak peek in the next hour so they could see it. And um, it's a hard life for the winners to pick them out. I know, it's, it's, the struggle is real. Next week, we're gonna be using grinding discs. We're gonna use sanding pads and sandpaper and the prizes are gonna be in that line there. So um, I see a few people asking about my shirt. This is our new vintage Clay Share shirt. It says Clay Share, established 2017. Um, Learn, make, share, our logo. So ah, I'm rocking the red tonight, but I also have a few other colors. <laughs> How much Darvan 7 should you put in a pint of underglaze? Half a teaspoon, quarter of a teaspoon, just a tiny bit, mix it up, see if that helps it flow better. If it's not flowing, put a little bit more. I answered that on, in the Speedball demo. They did the in, day. during Clay Share Day, Speedball came on and talked about that a lot. So you could check that out from Speedball, or you could just do what I say, your choice. <laughs> All right, everybody, take care. Have a great week. I'll see you all, uh, my premium members, in a few minutes. Everybody else.